In 1927, Teddy Roosevelt Jr. recommended that the Boy Scouts of America develop a new rank to be known as Honorary Scout. In the first year, 18 men were appointed to this new position, including George Palmer Putnam, an adventurer in his own right, but also a part of G.P. Putnam's son's publishing. During Putnam's many expeditions, he had always invited several boys, including his son David, to participate. He also introduced these boys not only to the adventure, but he would publish their simply written narratives of their experiences, and these books sold very well. As Putnam's interest in the Boy Scouts grew, he suggested that the Boy Scouts send two representatives as guests of himself and his son on a summer safari with famed wildlife photographers and filmmakers, Martin and O.C. Johnson. A third scout would be later added through the generosity of David T. Lehman Jr. of New York. Learn more about the three Boy Scouts in Africa in this edition of Artifact of the Week. The offer of a trip to Africa for two lucky Boy Scouts first appeared in Boy's Life magazine. Each council was invited to recommend two scouts based on their outdoor experience, good scouting life, and their ability to write. More than 200 names were received and these were reviewed by a committee of four members and then reviewed a second time by another board of four members until they were reduced to a list of 17 scouts. A special committee again reviewed these scouts and from them, seven were chosen to make a personal appearance before a final committee composed of James E. West, Colonel Teddy Roosevelt Jr., son of the late President Teddy Roosevelt, and George Putnam. Selected were David Martin, Douglas Oliver, and Dick Douglas. Well, instead of me telling you about their experiences, let's hear from the scouts themselves. This first interview with David Martin was produced in 2013 by the staff of the National Scouting Museum. Boys Life magazine, the national magazine of the Boy Scouts, uh, had an article in which they announced that they were going to sponsor a trip to British East Africa for some Eagle Scouts to spend the summer on safari with Martin and Osa Johnson, who were big game photographers out on the east, uh, eastern side of uh, Africa. We were to report into uh, New York City headquarters within a couple, three days. The day, in those days, of course, you didn't fly. You always went by train, so it was a, sort of a long trip to even get there. I got home, I discovered that I'd been selected as one of the three boys finalists that were to go to British East Africa. Teddy Roosevelt Jr. was a, a son of President Roosevelt, and he was on the final selection committee. And he was a great, great guy. He was a little fellow. Uh -huh. he, I, I imagine he was like, like five foot four or something. And a very peppery fellow and a really a great, great guy. <clears throat> He even took us out to uh, the old Roosevelt family home out on Long Island where his mother was still alive and we met her. So that was quite an experience. And then he saw you off when you left? Yeah, he saw us. Uh, he was down there when the boat, when the ship took off. And then from Mombasa we took the train up to uh, Nairobi, Kenya, which was inland about oh, three or four hundred miles by train. And that was an interesting train ride because you could sit at the window and see things like giraffe, and once in a while you'd see a lion, and you'd see a lot of wildebeest and zebra. You'd see all these from the train window. So we got into uh, Nairobi and met Martin and Osa Johnson. Martin and Osa Johnson at that time in the 1920s were famous big wildlife photographers. The process was this, that you, uh, you, you got a kill, which in that case was a zebra, and you staked it out and tied it to the ground with stakes. And the native tribesmen helped us in that. And then uh, you set your cameras up so they focused in on about, oh, what, 10 feet away maybe from the kill. And then we, we backed an old truck up and we slept in the truck hoping that the lions would show up. And sure enough, they showed up during the night. And matter of fact, not just one, we had three or four, so it got sort of spooky. 
but we uh, took a picture which came out very well and that was a sort of our highlight experience. So we were out there in this camp and we spent our days going out and photographing and when we got back home we uh, we wrote wrote up our experiences in something called Three Boy Scouts in Africa. At that time, Putnam Publishers were putting out a series of books by boys, books for boys by boys, and we were part of that series. And this book was uh, well, well accepted and well read. Travis Rubley of the Old North State Council conducted this second interview with Dick Douglas in 2016. At the time of the interview, Douglas was 102 years old. Then, since the uh, part of the financial thing of this background, you be put it on the publisher, uh, the background will be produce a book. And uh, we had to write themes and essays on about eight or ten selected topics. Then I, I got a telegram that uh, I was one of seven to be invited to New York. It's a committee composed of James E. West, Chief Scott Xavier, Theodore Roosevelt, the son of the parent. He lives out in Oyster Bay. And the third was uh, George Putnam. So I believe Putnam took us to a baseball game, Big League, first we'd ever seen. And uh, Roosevelt took us out to Oyster Bay and took us sailing, watching us all the time to see how we, you know, seven of us, mind you. And uh, then we were given a big stack of paper and pencils and told to write a 5,000 word essay on my trip to New York when I saw when I was interested in what reaction I had. That was sort of a, what we call a dry run for the African trip. Then we all went home and uh, three of us, Jack Oliver from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, Dave Martin from out in Minnesota, and me from Greensboro, we got a telegram that we had been selected three out of the seven. And uh, so from then on, I was in his days. I didn't know what was going on. What part of Africa did you all go to? We sailed, there wasn't any transcontinental or transocean of the headlines then. We sailed across the Atlantic on the yearly province to Harvard in France. Then we took a train across to Paris we met some Boy Scouts there, and we took another train down to Marseille in the Mediterranean. Then we got on an old tramp steamer, and it went through the Mediterranean, down through the Suez Canal, and down around the, what they now call the Horn of Africa, Somali, and uh, down to Mombasa on the East Coast. And then we took a train up to Nairobi, where Mr. Ms. Johnson met us. And uh, in about two days, <coughs> we, went out, we had about uh, five automobiles, and we had uh, of all the photographic equipment with beds and tents and cooking and so forth. <coughs> so then we went down into, I think we call it Tanzania now, it's Tanganyika then. It's the African provinces next to uh, uh, British East Africa. Upon their return from their African safari, the boys wrote the book Three Boy Scouts in Africa, which went on to sell more than 125,000 copies during its first year of publication. In the National Scouting Museum collection, we have David Martin's copy of the book, the copy he was holding in the interview. The book is an easy read and has nearly 40 photographs taken by the three scouts and the Johnsons during their five-week adventure in Africa. A second item we have in the collection is this sheath knife belonging to David Martin. The Marble Safety Axe Company of Gladstone, Michigan manufactured the knife, and based on the manufacturing information stamped on the tang of the knife, this knife was produced sometime between 1903 and 1918. 
The final item in the collection is David Martin's journal, written during the trip. The book is a general date book, with David's entries filling just 114 pages starting at the beginning. The first entry is dated June 5th, 1928, and as you can see, was written on January 2nd's page. Got up at 7.30, had breakfast with Mr. Putnam at Seymour's dining room, went to the trading post and had our clothes fitted. Here's an entry from Saturday, July 14th. I got up early at about eight o'clock. We started out on a small trip. Mr. J wanted to get some pictures. We were looking for lions most than anything. We saw seven at first. Mr. and Mrs. J killed a zebra to use as bait. Sunday, July 15th, 1928. Maasai tribe visit. Wanted to see if they could find some lions. In another entry, David writes, Mrs. J stalked a cheetah and shot one at 125 yards right through the head. This entry dated to July 18th appears to show that Mrs. J and the three scouts went out to look for lions with Mr. J staying back at the camp to deal with some cheetahs. A lion scared away the three cheetahs around there and took the baby Impala. In August, the three scouts returned to the United States and in the fall of 1928, the Johnsons returned after having shot more than 50,000 feet of 35 millimeter film. It wasn't enough to produce a full length feature film, so instead they produced a short film called Across the World with Mr. and Mrs. Martin Johnson. The three scouts are included in the title card of the movie, and the film ends with shots from this trip and the scouts on the train to begin their journey home. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Join us next time as we continue to learn more about the history of the BSA through the collection of the National Scouting Museum and Artifact of the Week.